In this video we are going to check out Wondergraph, uh, the solution for combining all of your APIs into a single source and much more. Before we get into the code examples, let's talk a little bit about Wondergraph and what it is. Wondergraph claims that it provides the best developer experience for working with APIs. Now, I don't want to call something I've been playing around with for a few days the best in anything, uh, but I've got to say that working with Wondergraph is pretty darn good and overall a nice experience. Now, what does Wondergraph do? Well, to put it into most simple of terms, Wondergraph will connect to all of your APIs and become a central spot for getting and updating data from your APIs. And I'm saying APIs here, but I should probably be using the term data sources because Wondergraph has the ability to merge multiple data sources into a single source with which you can communicate to display, update or add data using GraphQL. Now, those data sources can be databases, GraphQL APIs or REST APIs. So Wondergraph will essentially become a middleware between your data and your application. And your application can be anything from web applications to mobile applications. And it will provide you with a single GraphQL API with which you will communicate. And if you are building a React or Next.js application like we are doing on this channel, uh, it will automatically generate hooks for you that will make displaying, adding and updating your data a breeze as you will see in this video. Wondergraph will also take care of caching, security, permissions, authentication and real-time data for you. Now since this is a let's check out video, I'm not going to go very deep into Wondergraph because the point of these videos is for me to present technologies that I find interesting and hopefully spark interest in them in you also. And then if you find it interesting, you can take a deep dive yourselves. Also, please don't ask me questions about Wondergraph and how to do something with it. I'm a noob at it just like you. If you wanna ask questions about Wondergraph, you can join their Discord server or subreddit and ask it there. In this video, we are going to connect to our API platform from Directus and Next.js series using Wondergraph and then using hooks that are generated for us we are going to get the data on the client side only and then i'm going to show you how to get initial data on the server side also we are going to add some data to our api with provided hooks and i'm going to show you how to display newly added data live once you add it so let's get started the easiest way to start with Wondergraph is to install Wondergraph command line tools. And to do that, you just do yarn global add Wondergraph Wonderctl latest. Now, once this is finished, we can initialize our Wondergraph project. But before you do that, make sure that you have node at least version 14.17. So you do node V. As you can see, I'm using version 14.17. You need that version to be able to run Wondergraph. Okay, so next we are going to create a directory and call it Wonder. And then we are going to cd into Wonder directory. Now we need to initialize Wondergraph and Next.js project. And how do you do that? Well, you do it with this command, uh, Wonderctl. So we are using command line tools from Wondergraph. Init template Next.js starter. Okay, now if you do ls, this is all uh, just normal Next.js stuff, uh, which are used to on this channel. And after this, you just need to run yarn install. Now, once this is done, uh, you can just run uh, yarn dev or npm run dev if you are using uh, npm. And this is going to open up your usual uh, Next.js application, which, which you can of course see on localhost 3000. As you can see, this page looks a little bit different than what you would get with just vanilla Next.js. So you get welcome to Next.js with Wondergraph and so on. So now we are going to open this up in our editor. Now, before any, we do anything else, if you are using PHP Storm or WebStorm or something similar from the JetBrains uh, editors, please go into this .wundergraph directory and then go to generated and then 
right click on bundle and mark directory as excluded because if you don't do this uh, your computer is just going to catch on fire uh, because every time we do something Wundergraph is going to generate something for us and put it in this bundle folder and of course webstorm or php storm is going to try to index that and once you do that many times you're just going to run out of memory and so on so probably you don't need to do this on, on vs code or sublime or, to, or whatever the kids are using these days but on php storms and similar editors you need to do this because your computer is just going to catch fire Okay, so as you can see, we have a few directories here. Most of them are just your pure vanilla Next.js directories, but some of them aren't, like this Wundergraph and Minio. I think Minio is used for S3 file upload, something like that. Not really sure, uh, didn't play with it, so we are going to ignore it for now. But in the Wundergraph directory, you have this generated folder in which all the generated stuff that Wundergraph does is going to go into. Uh, then you, of course, have node modules, operations. Inside of operations, we are going to uh, add our GraphQL queries, so that's nice. And then you got some Wundergraph hooks, operations, and config TS file, which we are going to take a look at. Now, uh, one thing, uh, Wundergraph is using TypeScript, and it's best used with TypeScript. It says on their site that you can probably get away with using vanilla JavaScript, but I haven't tried that yet, so I can't vouch for that. Uh, but we are going to be using TypeScript in this tutorial. Uh, nothing too fancy. It's going to be pretty much just vanilla JavaScript with maybe some type typings. What is interesting here in this file and what we need to set up, so you have this Wundergraph config.ts file. In it, we have already two GraphQLs, not GraphQLs, but two data sources. Uh, those are mock data sources. One is from SpaceX and the other one is from Weather API. Uh, we are going to copy this and actually add our own data source, which we are going to be calling Directus. So we are going to connect to the Directus administration that we are doing in the directors and next.js series so if you have been following this series you probably have this installed on your local machine so we are going to actually connect to that graphql endpoint and just remember so Wundergraph doesn't have anything to do with that directors but it's going to magically connect to it get all the date not the actual data, but get all data schema from it. And then you will be able to use auto completion in your editors. A wound graph is pretty much is going to know what uh, data you are able to get from your APIs and so on. So let's go to our editor again. And now in here, so this is called directus the api namespace is very important because as i said you can merge few api sources into one api source so to differentiate them you need to define that api namespace and for that for us this is going to be called directus also so we have directus and of course this is not the correct address but it's going to be http not https localhost not 8080 but 8055 slash graphql so this is this graphql is actually our graphql endpoint and Wundergraph is going to introspect it and then get everything that we need from that endpoint okay so we did that now we need to define that down here so as you can see we have apis weather spacex and now i'm just going to add directors and this should actually be all of the configuration that we need to do at least for this video and for what we are trying to do uh, i don't think we need to do anything else you just save this and now one the graph is going to do its magic so how does Wundergraph work? How do you connect to it? And how do you get the data from your APIs? Well, that's actually pretty simple. 
you would uh, go to operations directory and inside this operations directory you would create a new query and you are going to call that query somehow. So since on our API we have products, we have posts, uh, I want to get products. So I'm just going to call this query products and you create a new file right here and call it products GraphQL. You can also see right here that you have some already made uh, GraphQL queries. So you can take a look at them, but we don't need them for now. Uh, we are just going to create our own query. Uh, let me make this bigger. And we are just going to try to get the products from our API. And how do you do that? Well, you just open up curly braces and you start writing directors. And as you can see already, wound graph is providing us with auto completion so it says direct us underscore products okay so we want to get the products after that i want to get the id i want to get product name right so product description great and maybe product image and we need the id for the image it can be empty. And that's it. We created our first GraphQL query with Wundergraph, which was helped which was helped a lot about by autocompletion that is provided for us. So we just saved this and now we have our GraphQL query ready. Now what we need to do, we are going to go to index the TSX file inside of our pages, clean it up a little bit, and then we are going to get our data. So inside of pages folder, you have index.tsx. This is our homepage. And I'm just going to delete everything from here. Well, most of the stuff. So we are going to leave main as it is. Do some writing right here. Let's check it out in the browser. So I don't want this to be at the center of the page. So let's get so let's just go to CSS. So you go to styles, home, and pretty much delete everything from here. Just leave the container. And in the container, we are also going to delete everything, put max width, let me make it bigger, put max width to be, I don't know, 960 old school and do margin 20 pixels auto. Okay, let's check it out. Great. Okay, so we are now getting everything here. Uh, so we can now start actually getting our data. And as you will see, this should be pretty easy for us with Winograph. So in our index TSX file, we just want to import something uh, which is going to be called use query. And we are going to import it from wound graph generated hooks. Okay, so we have this use query ready. Now to get the data, to get our product. Remember, we created this GraphQL query just a few minutes ago. So to get the data, you just do const and our product and our data is going to be called products. And all you need to do is you just say use query products. And that's it, right? This is the way you get the data. You don't need to use React query for this because Wundergraph is also going to pretty much do the same thing that uh, React query does. It's going to cache your data and everything. And actually, as you can see, the hook that you are getting is also called use query, just like in React query. So you get the products and we, we can cons log out those products. Save it and let's just see if this works. And let me make this bigger. And as you can see, we are getting responses. The response status, status is okay. And we get the body and in it would get data, direct as products, and we are getting all of our products right here. Uh, literally one line of code. So to get the products, you just needed to write one line of code. This is one of the things I really like about Wundergraph. Okay, so now let's try to get the posts 
uh, but we are going to get the initial data from posts from our server or from server side. So we are going to be using get server side props. And to do that, first of all, of course, we need to create a GraphQL query and you do it the same way you did it for products. So you just go to operation, create a new file. And this one we are going to be calling posts GraphQL. Okay, and now same thing as with products, you just start writing and the window graph is going to autocomplete this for you. So you do direct us and you find posts and it already knows what posts consist of. So of ID, title and body. And of course, if you do something like this, you're going to get uh, this red text, which says that we don't know what is this and this is actually not coming from your GraphQL schema. Great, so we are just going to uh, get those three data points and now uh, we can go to our index.tsx and here, so how would you get the data from server side? Of course, you can't use, uh, use query inside of get server side props because uh, well, that's just the React and Next.js way. Uh, you can't use them on the server. So instead of that, we are going to do something like this. So we are getting get server side props. I need to import this. So import get server side props. This is just the typing for get server side props. Also, we need to import the client. So I'm going to import client from Wondergraph generated client. I hope, yeah, okay, so from Bundegraph generated client. And you first of all, new up a client, then you just say await client.query.posts. And then you return props, which we are calling initial posts. And you said post, post status should be okay. And then you send the post body in. And here, we want to destructure initial posts. Okay, so we are getting initial posts right here. And so how do we get the posts? So we just do posts, use query, posts. And now the important thing here is you do initial state is going to be initial posts. And that's it. So the first batch of data is actually going to come from your server and then you get the posts and you can of course just display them like we did with products. Save this, let's go to our browser. Something is screwed up. Nope, it isn't. It works as it seems to me. So let's, let's just check out what we are getting inside of our response. So direct this post and now you get my first post, second post, third post and so on. Okay, so this also works, great. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is I wanna show you how you can use Wundergraph to actually add a post here. So in our director's administration, if we go to posts, I wanna add one more post here, but I wanna add it through my Next.js app and that is what we are going to be doing in a second. So now we wanna add a post to our API or to our data source. So how do we do that? Well, of course, you again need to create a GraphQL query. In this case, this is going to be a mutation. So I'm just going to create it right here and I'm going to call this one create post GraphQL. Okay. And now you do a mutation and we're going to call it add post. And in here we are going to have some data and we are going to fill that data a little bit later. Okay, so this should be mutation, right? Uh, next, now we need to find the method for adding posts to our directors API endpoint. And you do that without a completion. So you don't even need to know how it's called. You just do directors and as you can see, auto completion automatically, since it knows uh, you are trying to mutate some data, you get this create post item, update posts, uh, posts item, 
uh, create post items and so on. So what we need here is direct us create post item and it receives some data and that data is going to come from here. So we do data and we need to send ID title body and the slug. Okay, so we want to send that. And also we need to define the type of data that we are sending here. And Wundergraph is going to auto complete that for us also. So you start writing di direct us and this is going to be called direct us create posts input. Direct us create posts. That's actually the first value right here. So direct us create posts input and we need to make it mandatory. So you do this exclamation sign right here. And that's it. Now we don't have any more errors. We created our first mutation and we are going to use that mutation to actually add something to our data source or to our API. Save this. Now we can go to index.tsx file and here where we are importing use query, now we are going to also import use mutation. So now we need to initialize our mutation like this. So we get the create post method and we get the response which we are calling post right here. And then you do use mutation, create post and the data that is going to go into that. You just need to set this up like this. And now what we can do, I can go right here and create a button. And first of all, we are just going to try this out uh, with hard coded data. So I'm just going to paste this in and we're just having a simple button right here, which says on click create post, which we are getting from here, uh, create post input is going to be data. And that data is going to consist of title, which is going to be test body testing it slug is test and status is going to be draft. And we are just calling this add post. Okay, save this. And now we can already check if this works. So we can go to our browser. I'll refresh this again. Okay, so now this works. And now if I click add post, I will get something and hope that it's not an error. So the response. Well, actually, I think, uh, yeah, I'm just getting the post right here. But let's check this out. So if we have a new post right here. Okay, great. So we did get the post. I didn't console log anything from here. So we didn't see anything. Let's try to do it again. So I'm just going to go to here. And instead of console log posts, I'm going to console log post, which is going to be the response that we are going to get from the server once we mutate something to it or once we add data to it. So let's just save this, go to the browser and just do it one more time. So I'm going to refresh this. As you can see, status is currently none. And if I click add post, now the status is okay. And you get the body. Uh, if you had an error, you would actually get error right here. So you can uh, use that to create some error handling for your application. Okay, so this works now. But of course, this is just hard coded data. Let's create a form that we can fill out and then we can send it uh, to our API. Okay, so now I'm just going to delete this because we don't need it. And actually, I'm going to map our posts. And I just want to display our posts on the page. So to do that, just like in react query, you need to first check if you get the data. So you can do post response status equals okay. So if you get the posts, then you want to go uh, through direct posts, map them, and then we are just going to display the title of our posts. Let's save this, check it out in the browser. And as you can see, it says my first post, second post, third post and test. Great. Now we want to create a form. So let's just go to our code editor. And here I'm going to create a form. 
uh, this form is going to do something on submit is going to handle su that some submit somehow but let's just go through it so it has a title it has a slug it has a body and you have this button for creating a post so now we need to define this handle submit method and that method is going to look something like this it's very simple so i'm just going to paste it in right so handle submit we are getting the event that we are getting here uh, we are of course want to prevent default because if we don't do that our page is just going to refresh uh, from submitting and then we are going to create post so create post is this right here and we want to send input just like here so input data and then we want to set title title is going to be event dot target dot title dot value so whatever we are getting from this field and same from the other field so from the slug from the body and i'm just co hard coding the status right here because you need to send the status so the status is going to be draft and i think that's it let's just save it go to our browser refresh this page again and now i'm going to say hello the slug is going to be hello and something in the body create post okay so i think this worked but currently nothing is happening because we are using use query and not using use live query which i'm going to show you in a second but if i refresh the page as you can see i get hello right here and also if i refresh our, our administration we can also see that we get got the post uh, right here so as i said this would be much more effective if when i add post here i would just get the title of the newest post that was added right here and that's super simple to do so all you need to do is go to your code editor here uh, you would import use live query and then instead of using const posts use query posts you will just use use live query posts live query and it doesn't ac accept initial state so we need to delete that so we just use live query here save it go to the browser I don't know why i'm getting this error that's something with compiling i would guess so if i refresh the page everything is fine okay so now if i add hello again uh, we do slug and we do something for the body and i click create post and as you can see we just get hello again right here so that is all I had planned for this video. If you guys enjoyed this, please let me know down in the comments. Maybe I will make another video about it, which will cover some additional topics about Wondergraph. One of those should be, uh, which I didn't show you how you can join fewer APIs together, which is actually the main selling point of uh, Wondergraph, but we completely skipped it because this channel mostly deals with just connecting to one API and getting your data from there. But we can try some new things out if you're up for it. So let just let me know down in the comments uh, if you like this episode and if you would like to see more Wundergraph on this channel. And also there is complimentary service that comes with Wundergraph called Wunderhub which is like npm for apis i'm not sure i quite get what they are trying to do with that but i'm going to play with that a little bit later later and probably make a video about that also but for now this is wundergraph hope you liked it uh, if this sparked joy in you or interest in it please check out their web page it's on wundergraph.com uh, check out the guides and if you have some questions so you can go to their subreddit or to their discord server or even to their youtube and ask your questions there so anyway this has been it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it and i will see you in the next one